for our Wednesday evening program. Um, it's, we've got a, a light sprinkling of people at the front and quite a concentration hanging back at the bar. And it might be a nice idea if you came forward and filled things up so that, the, that our panellists can actually see the people they're speaking to. There's lots of space here. It's free seating. So if you move down, I think it would be a more welcoming atmosphere. Um, I'm not moderating the programme tonight. Nigel Gould Davis has very kindly agreed to do that, and uh, he's also very kindly organised the programme for this week. Before I hand over to him and let him introduce the panel, I just want to go through a few things that are coming up on the horizon. Um, on um, Friday, we've got a Meet the Press event uh, to welcome new correspondents and new uh, journalist members of the club. There's about 66 of them. It's probably a little bit more than that uh, in the past 18 months, which is a very large number. And uh, so we have a, a rollover, and it would be very nice to have some networking uh, between the old correspondents and the new ones and to welcome them, um, let, let us get to know them, and vice versa. And we'll also be having, in that event uh, keynote speakers so we have uh, the new bureau chief uh, for the Nikkei Asian Review in fact for the Nikkei organization who's just been appointed to Bangkok we have the new bureau chief for Bloomberg um, and uh, we have one other coming as well um, so anyway th there'll be it, it's going to be a special evening uh, on Monday we have our usual documentaries uh, this time it's called uh, Night Code Girl, and it's in conjunction with the American Embassy. Next week, at this time, we have a very interesting program, uh, which is a book launch of a book called uh, Beijing Smog, uh, and it's been written by a former president of the FCCT, Ian Williams, who was until recently with NBC, um, and it's a compelling um, farce, I think, of satire on modern China, the internet and all sorts of other misunderstandings. Um, the f on Friday, so that's the 22nd, that's a week from f the next Friday, we're going to be doing a backstory in the club and that will be on uh, what's been going on in Rakhine State, in Burma, the uh, exodus of Rohingyas uh, in very, very large numbers uh, from Myanmar into Bangladesh, where they're not wanted. Uh, the situation there is, of course, extremely critical. It's a kind of Yugoslavia-type problem uh, and verifiable ethnic cleansing underway. So it's a, an extremely disturbing story, and we're going to have two correspondents who've been up in that part of the world recently. We'll have Jonathan Head of the BBC uh, and Gwen Robinson of the Nikkei Asian Review uh, telling the backstory of what's going on, what they've seen, how they reported a very difficult situation. Um, and a few other things that I'd like to draw your attention to. On the 28th, which is a Thursday, we will have a program on the Ying Lak Shinawat verdict. So we had a, a program related to um, the Ying Lak situation earlier in the month, but the, the Supreme Court had not delivered uh, its verdict. So we'll be taking a look at that with the implications uh, we have Titinampong Sudirak and other noted commentators uh, booked. Um, on the 26th, which is a Tuesday, we have another uh, press event, which is a farewell for Jerome Taylor of AFP, who is um, somebody who's been sitting on the board for the last year um, and been very helpful to the club, and he's leaving, relocating to Hong Kong. And then finally, uh, down the line, um, I'd like to draw your attention to Friday the 10th of November, uh, which is uh, a major event that we're going to plan, uh, that we're, ha we're staging at the Dusitani, and it's the 60th anniversary of the FCCT. The FCCT has been in existence for 60 years, which is a fairly astonishing length of time. It's been through an enormous number of crises uh, and, and borderline failures at different junctures, but it continues to thrive. The membership is expanding again. Uh, and we're doing a lot to upgrade it. So we'll have a celebration of the club uh, at the Dusitani, where it was located for 15 years, uh, and we'll use that as a fundraising event for some of the expenditures that we've been putting through recently to make the club more welcoming. So on that note, I would like to hand over to Nigel and to welcome our very distinguished panellists tonight who very kindly agreed to come and talk to us. Welcome.
Could I ask our panelists to take their places, please? Good evening, everyone. Now, the Panama Canal, which connects the Atlantic and Pacific, was first proposed in detail in 1793 and built in 1914. The Channel Tunnel, which connects Britain and France, was first proposed in 1802 by Napoleon and built in 1994. The Gras Canal predates them all. It was first proposed in 1677 under King Narai. And of course, it remains unbuilt. It lays claim to be the oldest unfulfilled mega project in the world. It won't go away, this proposal. It's kept surfacing over the decades and even centuries. Uh, the building of such a canal would have profound implications for Thailand, for the economic geography and geopolitics of Asia, and for global trade and security. But the fact that it still hasn't yet been done suggests that there's more than one side to this argument. Uh, this proposal is now being actively discussed and canvassed again. There's a major conference on it just this Monday. So this is the ideal moment to explore uh, all of the issues and all of the arguments with uh, the distinguished panel that we have uh, this evening with us. So let me introduce briefly our speakers. Uh, Rear Admiral Chatupon Sukchalam is a graduate of marine engineering at the Royal Thai Naval Academy. He holds a master's in marine administration at Chulalongkorn and is a PhD candidate in marine administration at Songkla University. He has just been promoted to Rear Admiral. Mr. Chalampon Chai Warapongsa is president of Wong Samut Navigation. He's a marine business owner with nearly 40 years of experience in maritime affairs. He holds a business administration degree from ABAC, MBA from NIDA, and a master's degree in logistics from Chulalongkorn University, where he is the president of their uh, Alumni Association for Logistics and Supply. He's been studying the Gra Canal project for over 15 years. Dr. Harold Wagner holds a master's degree in civil engineering and a PhD degree in geotechnical science from the Technical University of Graz in Austria. He's a consultant for underground infrastructures with over 40 years of global experience. He's won numerous awards, including from the International Tunneling Association. Very pleased at short notice to be joined by Mr. Pakdi Tanapura, who holds a, a BA degree in political science from Tamasat and a master's degree in political science also at the University of Paris, too. He has a long-standing interest in the Gras Canal. He wrote a book about it back in 1992 and has been a member of numerous parliamentary commissions to study the canal. He's a board member of the Thai Chinese Culture and Economy Association and head of their Gras Canal study team. Finally, we have William Meller, a contributing writer for Nikkei Asian Review. He is one of Asia Pacific's most distinguished and experienced foreign correspondents. He's written and edited for Bloomberg, News, Time Magazine, and many others. Received numerous awards for his journalism, including United Nations Media Citation. It was his very interesting article on this subject in Nikkei Asian Review just a few weeks ago, which was the inspiration for this panel. Before I ask Mr. Pak D to begin our discussion, we have a small treat for you. I'd just like to show you. It's a very, very short video about the Gra Canal produced by the British Pathé News back in 1940. It's very amusing. Yes. 
Well, it's not the kind of voice you hear anymore, but it shows us that the interest in this project uh, is enduring. So I'd ask uh, Kun Pak Di now to open our discussion with his remarks. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, Pak Di Tanapura being involved, I was um, being involved on the Krakana for the past 40 years. Um, uh, I've been studying on these questions uh, and the importance of the of the this project, that how this project will provide uh, an impetus for Thai economy. So, uh, and we hope that now is the time that somehow the Thai people should decide whether they will go on with the Krak now. Uh, before going into the details, I would like to um, uh, give you some update of the chronology of the Krak now that we have uh, for the past 300 years. People think that uh, Krakana was uh, initiated 300 years ago, but, but 300, years, 300 years ago it was not uh, a Thai initiative. It was a French initiative by Mr. Delamar, an engineer from the, who came with uh, the, the uh, ambassador of Chevalier, Chevalier de Chomo of the of the of the French uh, group, and he suggested that uh, there should be something to do. We should be something that has to be done uh, to develop the Songkla Lake region and to dig uh, a waterway uh, joining the the Andaman Sea at that time. The real thinker of the Krakana was Prince Surasi, who is the second, or he is the brother of King Rama the first. And it happened that the thinking of the digging the canal coincided with the thinking of the digging of Euro Tunnel. It was Napoleon de Bonaparte, 200 years over 200 years ago who thought of digging the Euro Tunnel to send troops 
to conquer England. Uh, Prince Surasi, by that uh, during that time, uh, had envisaged uh, the sending troops through the canal from Songkhar, Songkhla Lake uh, in order to conquer Myanmar. There was somehow military thinking at that time. Now we have the Euro Tunnel, and hopefully the very soon we will have the Kra Canal. Uh, well, from the historical uh, documentation, uh, in fact, uh, John, Sir John Browning, when he came to Thailand to Siam at that time during the reign of King Rama IV, he suggests that Thailand, uh, Siam, should dig the canal. Uh, he said, it is said there would be a little difficulty in establishing a water communication between the Bay of Bengal and the Gulf of Siam. And then he said that uh, would be like the Panama, the Isthmus of uh, Darien, and like the Suez in Egypt. And that it is to be hoped that our opening relations with Siam will lead to an investigation and solution. Very clearly that uh, Sir John Bowring was very much in support. And uh, the team of uh, English engineers came and King Mongkut uh, of Siam that time granted a concession to the English team but uh, well, due to financial uh, obligations and the, the, the engineering uh, technique that the canal could not be dug at that time. Um, the, the idea of the canal was uh, off and on, in fact, uh, uh, in Thailand for 200 years. And as, especially in 1935, Dr. Pridi Panom Yong, uh, he was then the Minister of Interior, had suggested the digging of the Krak Canal. Uh, he uh, somehow proposed that Thailand should use its gold reserve to finance the digging of the Krak Canal, because uh, at that time, Thailand, he, wa he did not want, he said, Thailand should not uh, borrow money from abroad so that we don't get into the problem like the Suez and the Panama. Uh, well, it never happened. People said that there are some objections from the official from Thailand is that uh, the Krakana would divide the country into uh, two parts, like the southern part and the, and the northern part. So back in, uh, I think later, much later in 1960 to 70s, uh, the Krakana was picked up again by a business, uh, Chinese business tycoon, Mr. K.Y. Chow, who was successful in setting up a refinery in, in Thailand. And he proposed the uh, the digging of the canal from the Route 5A, which is much further south. 5A is uh, between Songkhla and Satun, which now are uh, very far south. And the company that took up the study was Tams Engineering. It's an American firm, and it was supported by the U.S. government. And the Thai government at that time was uh, a female child Prapat and Free Marshal Thanom uh, somehow support the idea of digging the canal, but as you know, that uh, the government was overthrown during the uprising of the students, uh, uh, 14 October uprising. So that's 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 how the the idea of the digging of the canal took took shape, up, and up until today, there are no serious attempt actually to to do the digging of the canal because uh, the lack of funding and the lack of the feasibility studies, the real one. Uh, you know that we had uh, 
on 9-11, exactly the same day, uh, the cabinet ministry has had adopted a resolution founding a national committee for the studies of the Kra Canal, you know, and uh, it was uh, headed by General Chavalit Dong Chayut, who was then Minister of, fi of, uh, of Defense and the Deputy Prime Minister taking care of uh, security. But the problem, again, you know, arise because the, the cabinet ministry had said in the resolution that the national committee had to find their own financing. And doing the feasibility study, it will cost something like two billion baht at least. And uh, of course, financing is lacking. And so the national committee fell apart. But the Senate, the ad hoc committee of the Senate uh, during that time had studied the, the p possibility of study of the, the canal and came up with uh, an idea of digging the canal through the Route 9A, which is uh, more down, down south from the Kra Isthmus, but coming up a little bit more between Trang, uh, Trang, uh, what, what, Nakhon uh, Tamarat, Trang and Nakhon Tamarat, that is the Route 9A. Uh, so up until now, there is discussion, and the Thai Canal Association, which is headed by General Pong Tep, which I represent today, uh, also pick up already the, the study of the Route 9A, and uh, it's going to be proposed, and General Pong Tep had proposed to the parliament to create an ad hoc commission to undertake the study of the Route 9A, which is uh, ob obviously has to be decided very soon. That's uh, more or less what's going on with the Kra Canal. Well, I, have, I would like to say two things about the, the canal. Uh, there are two myths about the canal. First, the, that the canal is going to divide the country. I don't know. We have admiral here. I have heard many admirals who said that no, the canal will not divide the Thailand into two parts. But instead, the canal will unite Thailand and will solve the problem in the south. That's, that's, a, that's the first point. And the second point I saw from the uh, video here, saying that the canal will undermine Singapore and Malaysia. In fact, the Kra Canal will not undermine the interests of Singapore and Malaysia. Instead, with the development of the canal, it would help Singapore and Malaysia to develop further. And because of raising of investment of 55 billion US dollars, uh, about $28 billion for the excavation, and the other $27 billion for the for construction of different facilities along the canal. We think that this amount of money is big enough to stimulate the whole economy of Southeast Asia into different level. And uh, the mega project, you know, China has proven uh, herself that China had developed for the past 30 years with the massive investment of mega projects and infrastructures. So we think that the, the myth saying that Canal, Thai Canal will undermine the interests of Singapore and Malaysia, which is, I can talk about that later. I can point out uh, the, how the, uh, the Thai Canal will ease the traffic from the Straits of Malacca and how it will help uh, enhancing the development of the economy of Southeast Asia as a whole. Uh, I would like to leave with that for the moment. Thank you very much, Kun Pak Di. We just wanted to 
briefly get up the, uh, the presentation that uh, Dr. Wagner will show later because it does indicate some of the roots there. But that's certainly not the only presentation that we have this evening. I'd like to ask uh, Rear Admiral Chatupon now to offer his thoughts. It's fine. No, the presentation will come later. It's just to, because uh, Kunpak D was making reference to various routes. But we'll, we'll be dis discussing the routes in more detail, and I think that uh, you will, um, uh, Rear Admiral, as well. So please go ahead with your, uh, your presentation. Thank you. Y yes, I just would like to show this map. Uh, it's uh, what we call sea lane of communication. Uh, in Southeast Asia, it's a choke point that we have to face this problem very soon. So I was just want to show how the Krak Canal will save uh, distances from the Strait of Malacca, from uh, the uh, Sunda Channel and the L Lombok Channel. So how the Krak Canal will look, look like in this uh, sea lanes of communication and the Krak Canal will be shortest route joining the uh, Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean in the future. Yeah, more on that later, and we're going to have more on routes as, uh, as well from other other speakers, I think. So, Rear Admiral, would you like to offer your views, please? please. That's it, that's it. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to say it. That's my PowerPoint. <laughs> but okay, I don't want to lose my time because we have a little time early. And thank you, Lubas, for everybody to be here. And I would like to thank you, uh, Dr. Nickel and Dominic. Uh, this is my best time to have a seminar because on the detail, I never have a chance to level before. This is my first time to level because it's my secret. And if we talk about the crack cannon, it looks like a legend such a long time, 200, 400 years ago. But nowadays, I will uh, open the fact, the truth. Many people misunderstood, everybody, except the people who have the site in the Marine Administration, me and the Navy, because I have a chance to passing through the Malacca Strait for many times. In that time, I tried to, to read it. I ever saw the many, many papers refer about Malacca Strait. It narrow. It narrows or not. I feel wonder when I'm in the academy. I passing through many times. I try to find the island. I try to find the land. I never find it. And then I have my map. <laughs> uh, after the seminar, somebody can ask me because I have uh, a little time. Sorry. So. This is the number that you can, that you can take a look. Thank you, sir. Malacca State is narrow, truth or not? Because the most of the people, the most of the people take a look, the maps only, and thinking and imagine. I said, inside, out. But in the economies of the marine sea transportation, you should education outside in two, right? Yeah. Malacca Strait, narrow, truth or not? <laughs> you can take a look. Yes, the narrowest width, 2,000, nearly 2,000. And looting, got canal, they will make it 400 meters. You can compare by yourself, which is narrow, okay. Go ahead, sir. Uh, just a moment, I said, it should be lay daily can. If I forgot, try to ask me, because they have many details to tell you. This is my first time to live my secret. This is the best secret in the world. <laughs> and you can see the map, uh, this is the real map. And uh, I make it short, like here. You will see it along the Malacca State, it have a rule of the law. It right here. This is the little map. 
So the width, the narrow is 1.16 nautical mile. It's about 2,000, 2,000 meters. You see the carrier can pass in too, no problem. And you see the length is about, uh, I, I can remember about 15 kilometers only. So not only when you're passing through this path, it has a station, radar station. When you're passing through, you will report your cosine, whole tensor, light, so like focus, something like that. And if you change your dilation a little bit, the radar will ask you, hey, Hotel Sela is a left thought. What about your attention? Keep inside. So if have the collision, is have an accident, it's upon the human error. The, the human error can occur everywhere in the world. Okay, sir. So you will realize that the Malacca State is not narrow, right? So the group, uh, some paper should be changed. The Malacca Nilo, no, not narrow. You dig it 400, it narrowest. <laughs> okay, sir. Yes. And the direction when you loot on the sea, I try to compare in the south of Thailand. Between the uh, lovely story, uh, such as when you're cruising the boat, the boat ship. If you want to compare the different, the length of time, I have three loops. The first loop this, start up here, passing through the crack canal to here, and to the back, met together, meeting point. And if you go through in the Sunda and Lombok, it should be like here. But okay, don't worry about the distance, because if you talk about the business, uh, in the sea transportation, we never talk about the distance. So some people take a mistake. We talk about the time. Because the time will pinpoint your pay the money. I will tell you, such as, you have to, to ship from Colombo, and then you separate together. One ship passing through the Canal, when she pressing through the Malacca and point together. You measurement, I measurement already. The different time is about 36 hours only. Not two days or three days. It, not truth. The truth is about uh, one point days only or 36 hours. That in the method, in the thought. But in the fact, in your life, in the sea, the one ship through Kakeno, you will stop. Stop for what? Pick up the pilot. Right? <laughs> About two hours. Because it the uh, regulation in the world. When you go to your ship, your vessel to anywhere in the world, you will pick up the pilot. The pilot will conduct you. Right? And then when you go through before you passing border of the Kakeno, you will sweep your ship. Five to left. It have many, many Iceland in the south of Thailand. More than 100 Iceland. On the other hand, you will explore what the Iceland is. Clippers or not? Cannot. Right? So you will take your ship, passing through at least about five hours. And in the Gat Canal, 120 kilometers. Do you can cruise? You speed like here? No. Eight not per hour solely, like here. How many? At least about 10 hours, you lose your time. And the opposite side, you will drop the pilot and then you go to left and live, left and left. I can collect already. You can save the time about 15 hours solely. You can earn the time 15 hours, but you will pay for 4.8 million. How about this, the, the, the volume? Because the paper education from the Thai authority, they ever have education already. They use the price from the Suez Canal. So if you are the owner of the ship, you try to trade off. You, you can leave back the time uh, 15 hours, but you will pay 4.8 million. And the one question I would like to ask the owner, ship owner, how about the cargo? Allow Singapore. You don't need money. You want to passing, and I don't mind the, I don't mind the, <laughs> the money, the cargo because 
you see in the south of this region, you have Australia, Indonesia, and the south like this, you have Africa, Argentina. The most of the cargo it will here, and the big ship, I will expand the loot, the loot in the world. I will say about the uh, 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 container carrier, they carry a big from Europe. When you're passing through the Suez Canal, and then you will clear your uh, container. Uh, excuse me, sir, again. I go ahead, sir. Uh, a passing, I will come back again. I will talk about, okay, you can imagine because everybody learn about geography. You can you imagine when you have a big ship through from the EU country, passing through the Suez Canal, and then you will clear your container in the Colombo, Malacca. Why you cleared it? Because it has some container came from to the south, Africa, Argentina, Brazil, and then when you clear container already, uh, the own container, you take it back and then you will get through the Penang port. The Penang is the third container big in the world. How many size of container? And then this big ship coming through the Singapore and clearly full of the container. If have some uh, container to loading, they will loading back and go back to EU country. This is the loot. So if this can, cannot can be, it can be 50% solely because if you divide it, uh, sir, okay. Do you, you divide it, uh, the geography between the south of Thailand Kakena is, is the mean standard. In the north, China, okay, maybe passed. But in the south, cannot. So I said, the possibly possible of this project, 50% solely. So we cannot give uh, benefit anymore. And the traffic, the paper, some paper, I read it. Traffic, six transportation, six and deep chip per day. Through some not effects. I have my document. 180 vessels per day, sorry. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Then you see the type of the ship. They have a various. This is, for example, this is the old, but uh, the next I will have a new. I want to show the type of the ship, so you take a look. The most of the vessel is the container, VLCC. And then lastly, I divided it about 180. Okay, sir. Let's go ahead. Yes, and, and another you have already. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, this is uh, 2015, and I would like to thank you, my instructor. He handed over me this uh, document. This is the Antat. The Pesina, yes. So you can see that this, uh, the curve is a little bit high, and the last the, the last the, the last document we have in 2015 is nearly 80,000 only. So you see that it a little bit, not too more. And I feel wonder where they have the document 600 per day. Maybe he he not tell uh, the truth. He said the truth. But someday because if they have a scholarship or have a time to watch out to take a look to keep his eyes on on this area. One day solely, two days solely, and calculate one, two, three, four. Okay, second day, go back. <laughs> no, it should be total in the year and divided by days. So, lovely, it's about 180 vessels only per day. Okay, go ahead, sir. The, uh, this is the number, I'm so sorry, you're not clearly. This is the document from Antak. You see, the vessel in the world is have nearly about 900. But if you use the own information from the paper, 600 per day, it more than the vessel in the world. Incredible, you see? <laughs> Thank you, you understood. <laughs> okay, go ahead, sir. The document from the Antarctic, not imagine, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then the map, as I say, the, the, is the number of the in the region, it weren't seaborne trade in the world. We have the paper, the Thai post that control 
using the company have skillful to education the world sea transportation in this region about uh, five or ten years ago but okay if somebody need the document I will show after that we can show that it between 12 percent and 80 percent you see if you take a look in the south of Thailand in the vertical so the people who take a look in the map they crazy about oh I will pass in here I will pass in here each other time but long mistake in the fact of the world sea transportation it's up and down not passing through like here understood that means such as China have commercial with Indonesia 200 million people uh, to uh, yes 200 and China how much 1,000 million they have and see one team together, Korea, Japan, to uh, Australia, to some country, Korea, to Indonesia with the Philippines. It's like here, not passing through right here. It have two, two type of the chip solid, tanker carrier and container carrier. And container carrier should be the big chip, as I uh, explained at the moment. The big chip came through and when they clear on the container, they hurry back to the EU because we call the feeder. Yeah, feeder. Many countries we have the feeder to pick it up. And if Thailand need to dig the canal, okay, possible, but I have sorry. China, Japan can be to pick the container around here. But I want to ask again the chief owner, how about the cargo here? Do you want money? Do you want money? <laughs> right? Because some cargo from the south of, of the region to the Singapore. And okay, just a moment, I would like to back again because I forgot. Uh, just when we talk about the uh, cheap pressing through here, about 180. It's not true. You will reduce again. Because the document, uh, the, the document, the evidence, we said that passing through, right? But this paper said pass through, maybe not pass through. Maybe just as uh, this is the Indonesia, they go to the area, they hit this area. They pass and drop Medan port, Pinan, and they back. They will go to the car canal here and turn out here? No, incredible. If some chip from the uh, Malaysia to another opposite side, economy of the scale, they're not passing through in the land. They use the big chip to carry and curb to opposite side. They not go through the car canal and come back. No way. So you will abstract the minor, the amount of the chip. So I think it's about 40 or 50 vessels per day. That's mean if exactly possible, possible about not more than 100 vessels per day to use in crack canal. I can guarantee. But see the document from the Antat. So save time? No. Sure. And I would like to Everybody for lean in my country, peace and knowledge in the world. If you saw some paper said, we will save the time. No, 15 hours only, no, <laughs> only. And waiting for what? This is the, wait, uh, the waste time that I, I said that. So about 17 minutes, 19 hours only, you can be back your time. And you will pay about 5 million per while yet. Try to think in apps or not. If you think, okay, value, I will pass it, and I will ask the owner, how about the car go to Singapore? You don't need it, because some go came from the south, right? And if we talk about around this area, now you can compare the distance from Japan, China, Korea, one year because of the world growing. Now, it's have a new rain, new route in the world. One year, they can passing this area about two months. Half already. <coughs> I said, really? And how about Krakenau? 
today you, you maybe didn't have an, any vessels to passing through, right? These are global warming, maybe, and now they, they have the, the loot already. And the uh, small detail, salt and oil. When you dig it, a massive of soil, where is the soil? Some people say that, okay, don't problem. When we dig it, we detect it, we will throw it in the sea to make a port. In another side, we make it, try to think about the EAA. The first, you dig it, a massive of soil, and then you take it back into the sea again, in the both sides of Thailand. I don't want to say it anymore. Everybody can thinking. Is with device or not, right? And in the soil, can you tell me what is the value? Gold, tin, tantalum. Yes, it's very, very more value. Who will invest? Who will connect this? Many, many people ask QB, hey, Emilio, you pick up the money from Singapore, you try to stop this project. That means Singapore pay me a money. I said, yes, they pay me. They pay me, please help me to, to, to this soil. I got it, <laughs> I need it. <laughs> Concessions, I ever hear from my friend, a Singapore man. I did a chant of my country. We cannot find a huge of the soil in the world the is the ones of my life. We will build our children in the future. I said, hey, it's really expensive. He said, more expensive. Concessions, I will win. For sure, win. In the south of Thailand, about last years ago, uh, some Malaysian people come to the south of Thailand to the whole, uh, whole location. Hey, free of charge to dig it, the Sungai Kolok. Liver, Thai people, ah, really good. They did it. The riches already go back to Singapore. <laughs> some tin, some, oh, I don't say anymore, it's not good. The, it's the same way. So we cannot let this problem to our children in the future. Let the people in the south of Thailand join his life, stay healthy with his natural. Right, And if we talk about the CO2, some people said that if you dig the big canal, you will save the earth, you will save the CO2, you can reduce in the world. I said, yes, you save it, but why you blow it in the south of Thailand, right? <laughs> How about our children? And not more for the CO2, for combustion. When your chip passing through the canal, you will shut down the field from the uh, MDO to the MGO, that's the plus. It's really bad story. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> and thank you very much. If you have any some questions, you can ask me after this seminar. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Rear Admiral. It's a, a fascinating uh, expert naval perspective. And I suppose you can say that the, the Rear Admiral's great secret is to ask how much time and money uh, the canal would save for how many ships. I know that Dr. Wagner will want to uh, respond to some of those points. I'll ask uh, Mr. Chalampon to, uh, to speak you. next, and then yeah, we'll I have continue. maybe a response I to that. Go here, continue to, to report again. Uh, the first, I would like to explain about the, the canal. The Kla Canal is on the Kla, Kla River. Don't confuse with the Thai Canal. Kla River is no more. It's a history <coughs> that uh, Kun Pakti told you. That is a history. We are in the present and the future. Uh, so the, the people always confuse about that, about what the 2A is a Kla Canal, Kla River. But now we're talking about the 9A and the 5A. I will continue the Kun Chatupon about the how to save and cooperative resistance. Example, the one where still the Su, 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 Su Max, Su Max, Thai, the tanker. The size, the one, 150, 100,000 day we're done at the 
the consultant at 56,000 at a time, I will compare the cost and the time for you. This is uh, and uh, compare with the how much the tariff to, should be the uh, for to correct it in the Thai canal. The there are the two uh, factor to involve the represent the safe time at the cost. The first the time charter time charter rate, time charter rate. The keeping we call you use this one to calculate the operating thing I spend for the that one, and another one the. The cost of a few oil, the uh, MGO on that time, the 470 and the 320 egg for the FO, FO. The vessel use a two type of a, two type of a uh, few oil, the FO and a MGO. This is a comparison. The important, they have not yet to show it any, anywhere. Have you seen? This is a, this figure that I got from the someone, the supporter, they said, that, oh, they can collect the three million dollars per day with that. But in fact, you, are, you can see if you pass the canal, how much you pay. And if you pass the uh, Maraca and go to the York, how much you pay. And if you pass the Maraca instead on to the Vietnam, okay, how much you pay. Would you like to pay this amount? You know, should you keep an owner? That's why I made another assumption, 0 0.9 and 0 0.2. If 0 0.9, still higher. Not attracting the owner to, to pass the canal. Uh, the best solution is 0 0.2. 0 0.2 is a possibility to uh, attract the chief owner to pass the canal, but not feasible. Not feasible the investment for the two million, two million, <coughs> but that uh, some supporter tried to tell you. We have to spend about the uh, 100 year, and the one day, the 10,000 10, million day, we are time to pass this canal. Impossible. Because the uh, Sioux Canal and the Panama Canal, only 50 to 70 years they are passing a day. That's why the impossible to, uh, for the one, we are still one, 10,000 years we are done, one and yet best sell to pass the canal to to risk to the cover the cost investment. Huh? And you see the same time, if you pass the canal and the to the Rayong, how much you have today? If you pass canal to um, uh, Vietnam Cape, you spend only the 17 hours. Not safe if compared to the cost you pay. As you see, the Sioux Canal and the Panama Sioux Canal, now they're declining the revenue. At the present, they're declining the revenue, and you predict the, the your canal to be get the more higher, higher revenue. No, impossible. In the future, why? Technology. Technology effect. You <laughs> okay. This is a future future technology to effect. Uh, this one the unmanned unmanned vessel and this one the uh, Yada Yada project of a uh, Norwegian project. Electric vessel. Uh, this one dual vessel, and this one the type of a solar vessel. This is a control the research by the Rolls Royce now researching, controlled by the center of the control and the control the vessel under. This is a future project to reduce the capacity to increase the capacity of vessel. Uh, in fact, the previous one the, we have the I want to show you how at the present. How much efficiency the vessel that can save the, the, the fuel oil? Anything more than 50% because they are used uh, the new, new modern technology to reduce the cost of the oil.
this one, the technology at patient to reduce the cost of the oil in the in, in patient, the best sales technology. This is the advanced technology of port. They call the floating terminal port. In the future, they use the, this one called the clean terminal port in a, in, in like the in the chain chain or the Barbara port. They will use this technology also. And we have another transportation like the train to the London now the 18 days only. We have the plan we and uh, now in China, China already direct, already built the one the uh, Beiyu to to Nanning. This is a pipeline. They they will release to reuse the transport by the West Dale. Of course, for the uh, about the oil. That this means the the West Dale for the tanker to pass the earlier that one will be reduced in the future. Because they're able to, they're able to discharge uh, oil here to direct to, to the China. And this is what uh, LA and Long Beach system, the automatic conveyor belt, modern, modern automatic conveyor belt. And this is a future. Not the, not the, not the past. We are the first and the future. That we we talking about history is the end. It's end. The future, the hyperloop system, of course, coming, uh, right? Sensor system by the admin. This is all add, uh, to make the efficiency for the transportation system in the future. And there are the three, there are four types. The thinking about the data, the canal, the first type of single open, open type, dual open type and uh, uh, the door type, and this was the rail canal by Korea. COVID cannot do the open type for the canal. Because why? Internal convention. You cannot violate the internal convention about the biology diversification. Because there are the di biology diversity between the Andaman and the Gulf of Thailand. This is a very important convention. You have to recognize that you want to dig the canal. That is between you have to try. Crossing Thai to try the and rail canal. Open Thai. Forget it. I show you this one, the white example, the C class, the the, uh, the people and that is the one in the cup, there was no one other species, what it is. And, uh, and the continental shelf, shelf the, about between the Andaman and the Gulf of Thailand, a, lot, a little bit higher. And the uh, yeah, temperature in the Gulf of Thailand more warmer than the, the Andaman Sea. What happened? If about the one or two degrees, someone said no effect, but I don't think so. The temperature may be affect the environment effect also. Uh, this is more important we have to consider when we, we want to use to, to make uh, the open tiger canal. What it is? If we talking about the economy, the west cell, the purpose of a canal is a, want to bring the west cell from one point to a one point. One point to one point. Why they want to stop here? For what? No point to stop the to to rest rest of town unless you have the port and industrial estate zone. This is an activity for make the people economic pe, pe, economic grow up the economic, not the canal. The people always mix together or to, together to confuse. Oh, make the canal. We will build the. As they are the industrial as they are the tourists, you can build whether, whether you have canal or not the canal, you able to build industrial zone and the port if the government allow and people, local people allow you to make, not to confuse, to mix together. It, they are the independent factor. 
you see this uh, for support the uh, dimming. They also have to build uh, the road for what? For transport. It's been they use the canal for passing, the vessel passing only. And they cannot, uh, they, I don't think they will use the local transport by, by, by this one. Because this one now, the, you, uh, can, you build the only the crossing tile only. Why you want to use this one? The, uh, this one more convenient and more safe cost, because safe time than that you use the canal to travel. Because I use the canal to spend about 10 or, 10 or 12 hours. But to use the road, uh, transport local, you spend a T hour for 150 kilometer. I'm talking about the local transport, not talking about that one. And somebody said, oh, we have the terminal for transport local. For me, I don't want to use a transport by that one. This is a project the China now invest infrastructure in this area. The project, Grand Maraca project, Singapore. You see that there's a more important picture. They make the land uh, between the Kuantan to Port Town. Now they able to compete with uh, Singapore. Why we can't to do? Thailand also can do. The land is to compete with this one. Also, uh, we have the terrain rail project. And you, you have a look at there. China never said, government never said about the Tarka Canal project. They are only the keep the, the policy regulator for the one belt, one load. China never talk. They're talking to people from the state enterprise who is uh, now the revenue are declining. They are three or four the state enterprise now they're coming and try to push government to build the canal. Despite, in fact, the pre-feasibility in the many universities, they, they show already what not feasible the project. But the some the group is still want to push the project. This one again, uh, and what they said two million five hundred, five hundred million worker, uh, that the canal. What 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 they come from? Not the Thai people. From China, Rohingya, maybe. Uh, but and the, the, the next problem the problem the Taiwan I must provide the budget for security and social. Yeah, the, 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 the problem we have to thinking and they never talking about the 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 decking the, the decking in the at sea the ninety nine kilometer. They're talking only about 150 kilometers on land. This is what maybe take, spend a more, more than a year and first for the project. Not, not, this, not, not, that, not only this one. They, they, they will ask the, about the cancel the law of natural park. They will have to ask the people, the land, the uh, expropriation. Maybe take a more than 10 years, you're able to, you, you, can, you can dig. Maybe another next 10 years, not, not uh, because the people not, maybe they not, don't know to move. Uh, unless they get the money from the government and they remove how much they get. Not easy to talk about this last uh, project over six years. But in fact, Thailand, we have the Southern Seaboard project in the fifth event, even national economy. So this is important that the government should be pushed this project for push, push uh, our economic system. This one, the land is under the, the southern seaport. The land will be between the stone and the soil. This is a 5A. 5A route uh, studied by the temp. Uh, the time the study the Thai Thai canal before and now the previous uh, the I think the on the taxi government they decide to you to make the land instead of the canal in the, in the southern seaboard, seaboard the project uh, this one the Pakwala the terminal 
they use a floating, floating, floating terminal system uh, for save the clear energy, clean, 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 clean port. So you make a clean port. This is a project, real project. And if we make the industrial zone, the four industrial zone, four points, points or something, that according to the what the going on for the support economic or not. This is that we're talking about. Not the, they, they never talk about the revenue or the revenue from the canal. They're talking about the industrial and the tourism, always. <laughs> And we use the high technology on the project to support the industrial zone, and uh, this is the best way, best solution. Unless if you, they want to, still want to, the government still want to uh, deck the canal, they should make the rail canal. I show you the that type of rail canal, and reduce the, reduce the, reduce the investment cost and try to uh, two rail canal first about the 80, 80 meter wide and not uh, so long, so long, not so deep because uh, if you make a deep, deep one, you have the problem to dig. If you make the right there, they said that they, they, you dig a 30 meter, 30 meter depth deep, you have to uh, dig in the sea about 63 kilometer in the Gulf of Thailand and about the 20, 20 not call my, I don't forget the how much uh, in kilometer, in Andaman Sea. Uh, and we have another project also, corridor project. They use the Tawai project. If we able to link the Tawai project with the Pachuok deep sea port, about the 150 kilo or so, is the another land we able to, to pay, make also. This is uh, the cooperation, the corridor uh, between the India and, and, uh, and the Japan to balance the economic uh, between the uh, China. The Thailand between the two, India and the China, the good opportunity is the uh, try to push the Southern Seaboard project. That's all. <laughs> Any question able to talk after that? I have more, more the, uh, details to show. Yeah. We'll certainly have time for a Q&A. Thank you very much, Kun Chalampon. A very forensic commercial perspective there with some <coughs> further arguments about the environmental and technological dimensions and their implications for the economics and sustainability of, of such a project. So, Dr. Wagner, we look forward to your reflections and comments now. Thank you. Well, first of all, I, I would say the quality of a good project always is shown by the critics on the project. So I'm very happy to hear these critical voices this evening. Uh, there are a lot of uh, questions uh, which uh, have been raised and also connections because I don't understand the connection between Hyperloop and between a project to make a shortcut from the Andaman Sea to the Bay of Siam. I, I definitely did not understand. Another one which I did not understand is the 600 chips per day. I never heard about that. I never read about that. I don't know where it comes from. So many people. We, we you can find where they issue everywhere in the Thailand if they need to dig it. They they said about the 90,000 90, vessels by China, is it impossible to attack the, for the number of vessels only 90? How come the 90 vessels to pass the uh, Balakas Canal? No, we have seen the number of 600, and I'm questioning where this number comes from. 600 vessels per day. I mean, uh, everybody has a common sense of understanding what is the saturation of the Malacca Strait? Everybody has an understanding, looking at the map, that the Malacca Strait is a very narrow strait. Everybody understands if we hear three, four, five times per year of accidents in the Malacca Strait. 
The last one was about one month ago that uh, uh, John McCain, a, a warship from the United uh, States, not, collided. Not, not the last, but just uh, 12, 12 o'clock this, 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 today. this day. Today. today. Not, well, not uh, that, that is a very clear sign of the no. <laughs> compassion. No, no, hold on, I think uh, we, we, we should let Dr. Wagner make his points and then we can have a, a, a Q&A in well, the panel as well as with the audience afterwards. Thank I, you. I, I, I think that uh, we, we really have a common understanding that the Malacca Strait is very narrow, that the strait is very congested, that accidents are a sign of congestion in, in, in such a traffic situation. We also know that uh, we have uh, how many, six or eight uh, spots in the Malacca Street with a, with a depth of not more than 23 meters. 25 meters. 25 meters. I mean, 25 meters is extremely, extremely yeah. shallow. Yeah, I know and, that. and we have increasing sizes of the ships. We go with... Uh, 5,000 uh, containers per ships. Now we make a construction of the so-called Panamax uh, vessel to 15,000 containers on a ship. So uh, how is this going <laughs> to be managed? Uh, would you and please let me explain? Well, well ma 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 maybe, sorry, maybe uh, when Dr. Wagner has finished. Thank you. Well, uh, and, and beside everything, I, I think, uh, Everybody looks to the map and has a clear understanding that this is a shortcut. This is a shortcut. And it's a 1,200 kilometer long shortcut. And your calculation for the uh, saving instead of three days to only save 17 hours, if I understood that right, I cannot follow that, that uh, calculation, you know? So maybe this is, this is one, one very clear uh, sign that we need to make a feasibility study so that we can sit all together around, around the table and uh, find a mutual agreement on 600 or 180 ships per day on 25 meters depth and, and on the, the width of the Malacca Street which is in, in the narrowest uh, area, I think it's uh, 800 meters. Or yeah, about one kilometer. About one kilometer. So what is one kilometer? You can walk one kilometer in 15 minutes if you walk. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I think common understanding is so clear because, uh, and, and regarding your, your uh, uh, ecological uh, argument, I mean, uh, the Suez Canal is 190 kilometers long. There is a difference in the height. It's a sea to sea, Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea, difference of 1.5 meters. It works perfectly without locks. It's an, this situation of the, of the Thai Canal is a situation which is a gift, which is a gift by nature, it's a gift by Geology also. I'm a geologist, basically, so I can also not follow all of your arguments <laughs> with regard to the digging. Uh, uh, I mean, we, we, we have to dig a lot, but uh, we dig in, in, in many areas in the world. And why do we have the Kiel Canal, which has uh, uh, a length of uh, 80 kilometers but saves 500 kilometers? One of the most successful uh, canals and can directly be uh, compared with the with the Thai Canal because uh, of the situation that uh, in the Kiel Canal case we just don't have to go around Denmark and in the Thai Canal case we don't have to go all around the down to Singapore and then back up again. So, Thank please. Thank you. Thank you. So we've spoken so far this evening uh, around questions uh, about the economics, the commerciality, the sustainability the technology of the canal. We haven't yet spoken about the politics of it. And I'm just going to ask now, William to address some of I would like to, to say views. something. I would like to say something. Okay, very quickly then, please, because we, yes, we are running against the clock. very important to the, for the uh, Admiral uh, presentation. 
I have here the study of the Mar Malaysia Maritime Institute of uh, the Maritime, uh, Malaysia Maritime Institute uh, that conduct a study very, very recently and saying that the Straits of Malacca will co be congested very soon, can accommodate only 122,000 ships. Right now we have about 90,000. And what will happen if the Straits of Malacca is congested? That's a question to ask in the study. This is the real, real study that was conducted by Malaysia. And they are concerned that the Straits of Malacca is going to be congested and somebody, somehow a solution has to be found. Okay, that's a good point. That's about the physical capacity of the, the Straits, not just the commerciality of alternative routes. Maybe we'll come back to that. But uh, I do want to offer some time to William, who's, uh, who's actually changed his plans to be here this evening. So the floor is yours. Thank you, um, and uh, good evening. It's good to be uh, back at the FCCT. Um, uh, I'd like to start with a couple of disclaimers. Um, one thing I think we all agree, I'm, I'm, pr I'm probably the least expert person on the crack canal on this panel. Um, also, it's a long time since I was actually stationed in Bangkok as a correspondent. Um, most recently I was based in Hong Kong, Beijing and, and Sydney for Bloomberg and, and though I was lucky enough to have a regional reporting brief um, and I returned to Thailand once or twice a year on assignment, um, I'm um, looking around the audience tonight. Uh, there are probably a lot of people present who uh, probably know far more about uh, than I do about how the power is wielded in Thailand and, and who, if anyone, influences the hunter's decision making on, on projects such as the Kra Canal. Um, but that said, perhaps I can help the discussion by sharing some anecdotes and impressions from my um, recent reporting assignment on the canal for, for Nikkei Asian Review, both in Bangkok and, and down in the south. Um, I'll also try and say a few words about where I think China fits into the equation and whether Beijing's Belt and Road Initiative will enable the canal's supporters to, uh, to defy history uh, and after so many fi failures finally, finally get this canal built. Um, you know, in my reporting, you know, I kept asking people like, you know, Compacti, you know, what, why is it different this time, you know, and, and of course, where's the, where's the money coming from? Um, actually, this, is, this isn't the first time I've um, written about the Krak Canal, or, um, uh, or rather the Thai Canal as it's, uh, as it's now been rebranded in English. Um, back in the mid-1990s, I, um, I also visited Thailand to write a story on it for a, a now defunct Hong Kong-based magazine. Uh, my boss back then, um, uh, Tony Paul, uh, now retired in Brisbane, but uh, uh, I think he's still a life member of this club, um, had a long time fascination with the Kra Canal. Um, and in those days, um, before the Asian financial crisis, he also had a sizable editorial budget. Uh, and he sent me to Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore for a couple of weeks to research and write a very long piece. Um, I went down to southern Thailand and uh, I drove what, drove what was then the, uh, the favoured route, 5A, um, uh, from just north of Songkla City to Satun via, um, via Ratapu. Um, I also went, to, uh, went out to Lad Prao to interview, uh, interview Compacti, and when I, when I told him I was going down to the south, he, uh, he offered to come along with me, and uh, so I spent two days sitting in a car with him, so uh, I've got no excuse for, uh, for not, not having heard the yes case on this. Um, I, I also interviewed the, the former Supreme Commander, uh, General Sayud Kurdpon, back then, um, who was and remains a, a big proponent of the canal. Um, although he didn't attend last Monday's conference, um, General Sayut sent a typically pugnacious message of support and uh, he, he, he even suggested the canal be elevated to a royal project um, uh, to avoid getting bogged down in politics. Um, 
Okay, but that was that was back in the 1990s, and that was kind of a strange time. Um, the region was booming, and um, old Cold War bamboo curtains were were being torn down, and new trade routes were being established um, uh, as China and Vietnam was opening up to the world. And of course, the Japanese had been scouring the world for trophy investments. Where when I was working at Time Magazine, they even bought the Rockefeller Center in New York, where where Time was based. And uh, in 1991, uh, the global infrastructure fund which uh, was a uh, I think is a think tank dominated by Jap Japanese industrialists had surveyed the Kra Isthmus and come up with a very grand vision uh, for not only a canal but also a huge port complex um, equivalent to Rotterdam's Europort uh, under that plan if Rotterdam was Europ Europort Sunclair would have become Asia port um, actually some of today's plans are always are also pretty grand. Um, th these days uh, for Rotterdam, read, read Dubai. Um, that's uh, that, that's what, uh, with, with the free trade zones and this sort of thing uh, is, is part of the plan for the current plan for the CRA. Um, but anyway, just as that just as that report was being prepared, um, the Japanese asset price bubble spectacularly burst and uh, um, uh, Japan embarked on its so-called lost decade and its investors certainly lost interest in forking out 20 billion for the uh, Kra Canal. Um, also, some of the plans seemed a bit outlandish at the time, using, using things like um, nuclear weapons to, um, uh, to, uh, to, to, to blast the, uh, the path of the canal. Um, anyway, ultimately, ultimately, the article I wrote was quite skeptical. It was, uh, the headline I wrote was Mirage or Vision. Um, and the, uh, the first illustration in the article was a sort of photo Photoshop picture of a, a ship plowing through a rice paddy uh, in southern Thailand. Uh, but I tried hard to balance the, the reporting for and against. Um, anyway, um, you know, fast forward 20 years, how, how did I come to, to revisit the canal story just now? Well, well, in the past year or so, um, I've been a fairly regular contributor to uh, Nikkei Asian Review and, uh, and back in June I was kicking around a few ideas with the, the chief editor, Gwen Robinson. I was, I, I was um, coming to Thailand anyway for another job and, um, and suggested that maybe I take a look at the canal's prospects in view of uh, the Belt and Road Initiative. Um, I was aware that the project had, um, had recently become even more shrouded in confusion as after two little-known companies from, from Thailand and China announced they'd um, signed an MOU to build it, only for the respective, go respective governments to uh, deny that a deal had taken place. And of course, um, the, the Prime Minister, uh, General Pryor, has said, said flatly that he wasn't interested in, in doing anything about it as long as, uh, as, long as he was uh, Prime Minister. Um, so I, um, I wasn't expecting to get much, um, much, uh, much news out of it, and uh, originally planned to write quite a short piece, but, um, but uh, th then all of a sudden, doors started opening for me, and, um, uh, and one of them was to General Ponte, um, head of this newly formed organisation called the Thai Canal Association for Study and Development, um, who was willing to meet me. Um, I hadn't met him or even heard of his group, uh, but he turned out to be a, an interesting character. He, um, he told me that as a young officer during the Vietnam War, he'd, uh, he'd volunteered straight out of the military academy to become a platoon commander in Vietnam uh, because he knew that if he, if he wasn't killed, um, the experience he gained there on the front line would, uh, would improve his career prospects over his contemporaries who uh, got their military training purely in the classroom. Well, well, that strategy appeared to work for him because he ended up as chief of staff of the army. Uh, and then after the 2006 coup, he was appointed secretary general of the uh, military-backed installed prime minister, uh, Surayud. Um, since retiring from active service, he's been secretary general of the Prem Tinsalonan Statesman Foundation. And both of the meetings I had with him uh, were in the offices of the Prem Foundation although he said he was acting in a personal capacity and that uh, General Prem wasn't directly involved. Either way, his backers include uh, numerous, numerous other re retired military men, um, uh, although the, um, also the Thai Chinese Cultural and Economic Association, headed by uh, the former Deputy Prime Minister of Boking Balakula, also, uh, uh, is also deeply involved. I interviewed, um, I interviewed uh, Dr. Boking for this story as well, and of course, re-interviewed Kun Pakti, who's a, a senior executive of the association. Anyway, after meeting, um, 
uh, General Pontate for the first time, I headed down to the south to re retrace the journey that I'd made 20 years earlier, um, or rather not exactly retrace, because um, Canal proponents now favour a, a different route further north than the one I, I drove back in the 90s. Um, on the Andaman coast, it starts at the estuary of the Galasai River, which isn't named on most maps, but forms the exact border uh, between the provinces of, of Krabi to the north and Trang to the south. Uh, it then follows a 135 kilometer somewhat circuitous route across the isthmus before exiting into the Gulf of Thailand on a sweeping st stretch of sand at Taborn, about, uh, about midway between the cities of Nakhonsi Tamrat and Songkhla. Um, now, the choice of this route is quite interesting. Uh, as we all, as we all uh, know, the uh, Isthmus of Kra at its narrowest point is, uh, is just 50 kilometres wide. So the chosen route is nearly uh, three times that length. It's also about 20 or more kilometres longer than the, um, the southern route uh, that I drove 20 years ago. Um, one reason, of course, is the terrain. Um, the, the present route avoids the hilly bits. In the, that make uh, canal construction right. difficult, uh, but I uh, but I heard that there's another reason. Um, the shortest and most direct route is very close to Myanmar. Uh, the southernmost route is very close to Malaysia. Um, the the Thais want to keep things as simple as possible by ensuring the approaches to the canal don't pass through uh, foreign territorial waters. But perhaps the most interesting thing I discovered while in the south was that um, despite Bangkok and Beijing's denials of any, any deals being struck, um, Chinese businessmen and researchers from Peking University uh, have continued to visit southern Thailand to study the route. Um, so of course of the, um, uh, of the retired military men of the Canal Association um, who even borrowed a helicopter from the 4th Army to, to make a recce. Um, fishermen I interviewed down there told me how surprised they were to find um, generals from Bangkok and businessmen from Guangzhou suddenly turning up to hire their boats for study trips. And when I got back to Bangkok, General Pongte pretty much confirmed everything I'd heard down there. Um, one thing that the generals and other canal supporters are less inclined to discuss is who the, um, you know, who, who the Chinese business people with the money are. Um, the locals I spoke of, uh, I spoke to, spoke of visits by Li Yonghong, the, um, the co-chairman of AC Milan Football Club. But I, I didn't have the time or resources to confirm that. And, um, uh, but one of the companies Li said to control, uh, Grand Dragon International Holding, um, sometimes called by its pinyin name, Long Hao, uh, is named in the literature put out by the canal supporters as having, um, having studied the route. Um, also extremely interesting was the way the Canal Association and its backers have not only s surveyed their favourite route, but they've also set out to woo the villagers who, who live in its path. Um, you can tell there are former, former military men involved. There's a real sort of hearts and minds campaign going on down there. I visited about four villages, and each of them has a very highly organised committee of canal supporters. Um, they already have collected about 100,000 signatures on a petition, which isn't bad considering that only about 65,000 people live on the actual route. Um, they've been promised a royalty for the, um, for, from the toll charges and uh, jobs for their children, of course, and, uh, and also that their environmental concerns will be addressed, uh, particularly such issues as seepage of salt water from the, uh, from the canal into their farms. Um, it's interesting that the Canal Association has hired a, a senior environmental uh, uh, bureaucrat, Dr. Ch Chumpon Sukassian, um, a former ASEAN wildlife protection chief who, who was also once in charge of Thailand's national parks. Uh, Dr. Chumpon told me his job is, is to address um, locals' concerns. Um, uh, for now, though, the village headmen told me that their, uh, their people overwhelmingly support the canal. Uh, they definitely need the money. Um, many of them are rubber farmers or, uh, uh, or labourers on rubber plantations. And, of course, rubber prices aren't doing all that well. Uh, the last time I looked, um, the Thai free on board rubber price in Bangkok was, about, was south of 60 baht a kilo, and that's down about 71% from its 
historical peak of about 200 baht in, uh, in February 2011. Um, Thailand, of course, is the world number one exporter of rubber. Um, but uh, as one farmer told me ruefully, we're the, the World Cup winners at exporting rubber, but we uh, continue to get poorer. Um, that's perhaps why another village leader told me uh, the people here aren't worried about the canal being built, they're, they're more worried about it not happening. Uh, but of course, you know, promises are easy. Um, should, um, should General Pryor change his mind and order a feasibility study, obviously the environmental implications will clearly um, become a, a battleground. But it's interesting that the Canal Association is, uh, is already looking that far ahead. Um, now let me take a look at the, um, at the importance of the Kra Canal for China. Um, anyone who attended the, um, uh, the Kra Canal conference on Monday uh, couldn't have missed the succession of, of Chinese academics and experts who, who urged the Thai government to move swiftly to set, set the canal project in motion. So did the European Chambers of Commerce, incidentally. Um, my, my understanding is that the Beijing government also definitely wants it to happen, uh, but they're di diplomatic enough not to say so uh, for fear of being seen to intrude in Thailand's internal affairs. Uh, their attitude is that it's, um, it's Bangkok's call, but should that happen, uh, there will be big, um, big Chinese SOEs ready to move. Could they do the job? Well, I was one of the journalists who, uh, who got a seat on the first train from Beijing to Tibet in 2006 when the Tibet railway line opened and having seen how they managed to construct that line um, uh, over the, uh, from, from, uh, from Qinghai uh, over, the Tibetan, over the rim of the Tibetan plateau and onto Lhasa it makes me think that uh, a sea level canal across the isthmus of Kra won't be, uh, won't be too difficult for them. I think Dr. Wagner would probably uh, agree with that. Um, so, so why would China want to do it? Of course, we all, we all know that China's doing everything it can to reduce its dependence on the, the Malacca Strait. Um, we've already seen, as, as we've seen, pipelines through Myanmar and Central Asia. China, China's even talking about opening a, a, northern, a northern sea route through the Arctic. Um, especially now global warming is, um, is reducing the ice cap. So, so yes, of, of course, the Kra Canal would be a, a great shortcut for them and, and fit perfectly with the Belt and Road. Uh, but there are also, of course, you know, greater geopolitical issues at play. Um, as we all know, Ch you know Ch China fears the, uh, uh, the, the possibility of a rival power, read the US, um, possibly blocking the Malacca Strait and, and of course tensions are getting higher because of what's happening in the South China Sea. Um, although, um, uh, I've got, and of course there's another, uh, another issue, the regional rivalry between Asia's two great neighbours, uh, China and India. Everybody today is quite, quite rightly focused on North Korea and the potential for nuclear war there, but let's not also forget that the um, uh, the enduring legacy of the border war that two other nuclear armed neighbours, China and India, fought back in 1962. Um, a, a couple of years ago, I was part of a Bloomberg team reporting on China-India rivalry and uh, how much the how the much more vaunted meeting between Xi Jinping and Modi in 2015 was it was improving relations. Um, it was interesting that uh, just as Modi and Xi Jinping were toasting each other in Modi's hometown, in uh, sorry Xi Jinping's hometown, Xi'an, um, two incidents soured their love fest. Um, high in the Himalayas, um, Indian and Chinese troops were facing off uh, across their disputed frontier. Um, after what New Delhi claimed was an incursion by the People's Liberation Army. And in the south, close to where India and Sri Lanka are separated by just 30 kilometers of, of the stra of strait, um, a Chinese submarine docked silently a few days earlier in the Sri Lankan capital, Colombo, the first, first such visit. China denied any border infiltration had occurred and, and brushed off the submarine visitors um, as a refueling stop. Yet, even as China spoke of closer ties, um, uh, what was it reminding its rival India of who caused the shots? Um, of course, who caused the shots in the Indian Ocean is a major issue. India understandably 
sees the eponymously named ocean as its turf, but uh, China's long been consolidating its so-called string of pearls strategy um, by building ports and uh, naval bases around the Indian Ocean Rim, um, uh, you know, in, in Pakistan and of course in Myanmar. And now China's just signed a $1 billion deal to operate the um, uh, Ham Hamban Totoa port in Sri Lanka. Um, a Kra Canal largely funded or heavily influenced by China would argue, argue, arguably be the, uh, the jewel in that string of pearls, if you'll excuse the, the mixed metaphor. Uh, in fact, if you read uh, Sri Lankan newspapers, um, a lot of journalists there seem to think the Kra Canal is a fait accompli, um, or even that it's already under construction. Uh, I know that kind of sounds ridiculous to us sitting here, but um, you know that's what, uh, that's what some journalists there think. Um, and uh, for many in Sri Lanka, it appears that uh, uh, Hamban uh, Ham Totoa and the Kra Canal are part of the same strategy. Uh, so in conclusion, um, I'm still not sure, sure whether the Kra Canal's a vision or a mirage, uh, but a few things do strike me as perhaps pertinent. Um, firstly, even, even while there's a military hunter in power in Bangkok that, that doesn't exactly uh, encourage alternative points of view, there are so many seemingly quite influential ties who are prepared to stick their heads above the parapet and urge General pa Pryor to change his mind and agree to a, <coughs> a feasibility study. Um, secondly, unlike previous attempts to promote the canal, serious efforts seem to be underway in the south to enlist the support of, of local people. Thirdly, the Belt and Road and China's mm -hmm. geopolitical imperatives to suggest to me that there may be a better chance of it happening in the next decade or so than perhaps in the previous 300 years. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. So, a lot of quiet, low-level activity, support from local communities for economic reasons, interestingly, and increasingly visible Chinese active support and, and possibly money to follow. We have a few minutes for questions, so do please uh, line up uh, behind the microphone as usual. Uh, given our time constraint, please try to keep them short. Uh, your questions, any comments. Uh, we've had some lively disagreement already, so there'll be a range of views, no doubt, and answers to the questions that you ask. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is uh, Krachang Pantum Nawin, twice member of National Assembly, once Deputy Secretary General to the Prime Minister General Grand Sak Shamanan. I speak with that kind of knowledge. I am 79. I would like to continue from uh, Mr. Muller or Miller. He said that it's a mirage. I said, the dead horse, please forgive my frankness and straight talk. We have too much convolution and euphemism in the world of media. You see, the choke point, Mahan choke point at Malacca Strait is no longer a choke point. The Chinese have changed the ball game already. The choke point is now at Spratly and Paracel. And China is a land-based superpower. They don't need sea transportation. With the missile capability, the American naval power is nothing. They have created this, the Civil Road, land route Civil Road to London already. Why we are talking about this? I told my friend that I came here this evening to see how the FCCT flock a dead horse. And forgive me, Mr. Chairman, you flock a dead horse really badly. <laughs> you see? I'm sorry, we, we, but, that's, okay, okay. the point, it's a okay. choke point, it's very clear. Well, it's not a choke point, okay, you're okay. saying. Well, now, well, could we have I, the next question? Because we are running up against the clock. Okay. Thank you. One, one more. One, one, Quickly, one minute, please. One minute, yes. 
1979, a Japanese consortium has come to my government, proposed 5 billion canal to dig it through Suratani to Panga, and we rejected it. Uh, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I think your skepticism is very clear. No, no. One, I'm, I'm one, sorry, one, we've really got a few minutes. We've just. One last point. Last point. Gra Canal is very valuable for spending money on feasibility studies. Mm -hmm. 200 million in one government, I wouldn't like to say, was wasted to study Gra Canal and never produce report. Thank you. Okay, very good. We'll, t we'll take another question and then we'll, we'll ask uh, our panel to address them both. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Erwin Charles. I'm a French uh, former defense attaché here in Bangkok and uh, uh, a strategic and uh, business analyst here in Bangkok. Uh, I have two, two, two major questions I, I would like to raise to uh, the, the panel and especially to Riol and Miron. Uh, I do not understand one key point, uh, which is why uh, Panama Canal and uh, Suez Canal are uh, valuable project and profitable projects. Uh, Panama Canal uh, hosts 38 ships a day, and Panama and the Suez Canal hosts 45. So why uh, are these uh, projects uh, profitable and why would Kraken all not be profitable? This is one point in which uh, I do not understand. And I do, my second question, and directly to you, sir, your, um, you raised the point that a ship should pay for 0.8 million US dollar per transit, which is 10 times the price for Panama and Suez Canal. So why would these uh, Thai fares be so, uh, let's say, 10 times the, 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 the fare of uh, comparable canals in Suez and Panama? Thank you. Oh, so two sets of questions, pulling opposite directions. Firstly, uh, a skeptical view, uh, it's a solution in search of a problem, so to speak. And the second view um, won't in fact be commercially profitable, despite your criticism of it. So let's take I the questions in this order. If, it, if it's commercial uh, profitable. Uh, I would like to say one thing. These gentlemen raised the issue that China is now landlocked or power. Don't you know that 80% uh, of the Chinese oil goes through the Straits of Malacca? So right now, China is very careful that uh, if the Straits of Malacca is blocked, then China will be in bad, big trouble with the oil consumption. 80% of Chinese oil going through the Straits of Malacca. So there is no reason why China is not interested in the, uh, having alternative to the Straits of Malacca. That is to say the Canal du Croix, the, the, the Croix Canal. So uh, uh, one very important point, which is the many, I would like to say that many misled figures that was taken from many other parts here and they're flying all around. That's the reason why we are not the Thai Canal Association, as well as the Thai Chinese uh, Economic and, uh, and uh, Cultural Association. We are not saying that we are want to dig the canal immediately. What we would like to have is a set up of the national committee to conduct the feasibility studies no, we don't want to replace like the gentleman on, on my far left, far right, sorry, saying that we want to replace maritime transport by land transport. What, what, what is this, this uh, hypothesis? So the, 
very comprehensive feasibility study is needed for the Krak Canal. And that we are asking the Thai government not to build the canal. That's not the, the issue. It's for once and for all, we conduct the study and we will see how it is going to be feasible for such a canal. And for example, 600 chips a day going through the state of Malacca, I, I cannot, I don't know where it comes from. The figure is very simple, about 300 chips. And if 100 chips going through the uh, the Krak Canal, it will be very good for the Thai economy. You know, so I, I don't, all these have to be really uh, study, to be studied seriously about uh, our, the, that's the future of our country is at stake. Let me also yeah. make a short yeah, comment, yeah. and I would like to refer to your to your very briefly presentation. You took the number of seventy billion for the cost of the canal. This, this number, I don't know also, uh, I've never heard about this number, number but I have seen it on your slide. Two, two million, two million, uh, that's the number from your the summer support. No, no, 70 billion, you have on your slide, 70 billion for the construction of the canal. Seven million, how much? Uh, ten. Seven, 70 billion U US dollar, I have seen. Seven billion? Six billion. I, I think the value, the value and the amount of the money is not enough. But okay, we understood that it's a huge, it's a massive of the makeup project. That's it. Because the time is changed, the value is changed, right? So we, we, we don't mind to talk about the how much, 1.5 to But anyway, we understood that it's a huge of the project, makeup project, right? No, what, the, what, I, what I would like to, to state is, that uh, a project like this needs the full confidence of the people. If we, if we have doubts, and you can read in the teachings of the Buddha what happens if you have doubts, it is destructive. It is the worst you can have if you don't have a clear understanding. And the clear understanding in the case of the Thai Canal is so easy, it's so simple to have a shortcut and to have examples like the Suez Canal and the Panama Canal and the Kiel Canal where Egypt is living from the Suez Canal. Panama is living from the Suez Canal. The Panama Canal auth uh, Authority has paid $10 billion since 2005 in 10 years to the government of Panama. If they have no canal, the, this country is, is bankrupt. How much do we, do we uh, waive if we do not build it? That's the question which we should answer. We, if we do not build it, Singapore will be more and more rich in spite of the fact that Singapore only has 7% from its uh, uh, gross domestic product from the harbor activities they have. So we, we wouldn't even uh, touch them, but somehow Singapore has a, has a <laughs> prestigious thinking that if uh, Thailand has the, the Thai Canal, then they would lose reputation or they would lose prestige. I think that's, that's the wrong, that's the wrong approach. The worst you can do in life, and if you are 79, I'm 76, so I'm only three years younger than <laughs> you. <laughs> I can tell you, the worst if you are governed by fear. Never, never accept fear. Let, 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 no, let, no, no, no. May, may I share? Yes, uh, please, may I share? Because I never said 7 million. Because inside I said 60 to, say, six, 60 to 70 million. Not 7 million. 60 to 70 million. That's For the invest? Yeah, that's what I said. You, you convert. You convert. You say seven million, mm. not seven million. We said seventy million. Can, can you show the slide again? It's all right. So the the slide uh, very hard to open. While you're doing that, just make the observation. A question was asked earlier about the feasibility study. I, I want to reply. Yes, it will cost money. And another one. I want to reply about about for you.
you about the Sioux Canal and uh, Panama. The benefit because the Sioux Canal uh, saved the 12 days of time yes. and the Panama saved uh, 20 to 26 days of time for the war. This is the more compared with the Thai, Thai Canal only saved the sub hour and the two days for Tulayong. Different a lot. Yeah, so a I mean, feasibility study would certainly cost money, but would it not at least help to address this question? There's a whole range of different uh, views about the underlying facts, what the commerciality is, how much time would be saved, how many ships would actually be able to use it. And we don't have a single view of the truth on this. Is it 60 to 70 million? How much? Calculate. Yeah, yeah. Million. US dollar 60 to 70 million. Yeah. 60. That's what I said. Uh, 60. I, I didn't say that. It's that the number it can change. It's, it's upon the time. Maybe yes. if we set up the bridge project in five years, it change again. So the, don't be worried, but we will talk in that uh, high school. Just a moment that you refer to the Suez Canal and Panama Canal. If you are the captain, you're not passing through, you pay a lot of money. But in Crack Canal, you can save at least about 15 dollars solely. To, so, it, so I said that if you are the ship owner, try to trade off. You, you, you receive the time 15 hours, but you pay about 4.8 uh, 4 million baht. This is a use calculate from the toy fee of the Suez Canal. So I said in the middle, if you are the cheap owner, try to think. You pay the money, you can pay back the time fifty dollars only. And I will ask you if you choose this way, how about the cargo at the Singapore and Penang? That your money you will leave it? You don't mind it? So I said this I, project. I, I would just like to say one thing about the distance saving. You realize that the Q canal save only 500 kilometers to go between the North Sea and the Baltic Sea. Okay, I have and, I'm sorry. I'm okay. uh, and that generates the same amount of income to the Panama Canal. So it's not a question very much of distance serving. It's a question of industrial development. We want this to be the center of the industrial development and the development of Thai economy. It's nothing to do with the distance of being so much. Besides, I would like to say that according to the study of the Malaysia Insta in, uh, Maritime Institute of uh, uh, Maritime Institute of Malaysia, the, uh, the uh, states of Malacca will be congest in no time. Hmm. We will congest it with the Capacity of 122,000 chips. How, how you get I, how you reference the big companies? I'm afraid, well, unfortunately, we're out of time. Please, uh, we're going to be keeping our, from I, I our staff here. I have here the paper if gentlemen. you want to see. You have if you to want see to see. You, you, you gentlemen, gentlemen, uh, have enough. 90,000 90, vessels. How you able to fit the, all the chips oh. of 95 vessels to come in America oh. while they went there? How you not? We're out, of, we're out of time, gentlemen. <laughs> I honestly don't remember a, a disagreement as this lively uh, at the FCCT in, in recent memory. The discussions will continue long to the night, perhaps at another bar somewhere. We have to stop now, unfortunately. We'll be keeping the staff late. But thank you all very much for a very stimulating and cordial disagreement in an excellent evening, and thank you all for coming.